Hi guys, welcome back to Dutch Modeling. We're having another review today. Maybe you notice I turned the camera a little bit. I hope this is uh, the best setup so far. I got some reactions on my earlier questions about the camera angle, so I'm hoping this will do. Uh, yeah, inbox review today. It's the uh, Great Wall Hobby 3.7 cm Flak 33 of uh, Swero Wehrmacht Slapper or SWS. Uh, box art, yeah, like it, clean and simple. On the side, some cat drawings with the PE placement. Here another right. Some camo ups. There you can see the kit number. There's nothing on the back. Uh, I got this kit out of eBay after seeing uh, the review of how I go and see. So if there are any questions after my review or you value someone else's opinion, I know he did one. It's go and see. Let's go to YouTube and you'll find him very soon. He also did a review of this one. He also built it already. So uh, I hope you like it. So let's start. It's, uh, this is not part of the kit. I got this from the eBay seller. I didn't know it, so it's always a nice extra. Uh, let's see what we got here. Making a little bit of room. The instructions. Uh, some writing up in figure language. Could be, I think it could be Chinese, Japanese, Korean. I really don't know. Uh, English. Let's see, and that's it. Some lot of small inlay, so that's probably a little mistake. It says correction, so there will be. Uh, caution, sprue map, which is. Yeah, it is numbered, but it's very hard to see. Let's see if I can, I can't zoom you in because I can't reach the button like this. Sorry. And they start by building the the axles from the yeah the axle on the axle carriers from the SWS. And if you build those, they go into the Chassis. We will place the swing arms. Then you will building the uh, front suspension, steering and uh, suspension. After that will be the multi-part wheels. And by the looks of it, the front wheels of the cab consist out of seven parts. Not too bad. Uh, the normal road wheels are two. Three parts are these road wheels? Oh, they're multiple layer wheels. At least two parts, three parts, and this pocket is four parts with PE, so let's be fun. Uh, then placing the wheels onto the suspension, placing the front steering. And back here is the gas tank. Um, looks like a winch. Here, I'm guessing these will be the parts for the uh, yeah. These are the air tanks, and these some little bits going on. Placing the transmission. Here are the air tanks. Here's the fuel tank. Next step is the driver's cap, with the dashboard being placed, <coughs> chairs being placed. Uh, here are some tools and some more driver's parts, handbrake, gear shear, gear lever, lighting is going to place here, the horn is placed, just the underside, can really, cannot really see what is this. Uh, step 10 is the armor for the cap, 
Going continuing step 11, placement of a weapon and some extra armoring. Uh, can, can choose if you want the driver and the co-driver's hatch opened or closed here. And the engine, the bombet is going on, the hood, whatever you want. Uh, the roof cover is going on, and then the grills and some handles. And then you go to the uh, loading area. Mesh, PE mesh is going installed. Pre grill some holes, and then a firing mode or travel mode, just what you want. And this is more of the loading area, or the flat bed, back, back, bed, flat bed, yeah, flat bed. Uh, closing, opening, it is how you want it in a firing, in more transport mode or in firing mode. Then it's the flag, it's be <coughs> sorry for that, guys. The flag's being assembled. Multiple parts here. Hmm. Again, here you have to choose if you want it in firing mode or in travel mode. Here's the uh, so these table where the gun goes on. The ammunition cache, and then they are get bound together. Here you're gonna build a gun shield. Okay, this is the gun shield, and then you're going here to a, it looks to me, it's like a basket that catches the brass after firing, so it doesn't fly everywhere. This is going to be fun. And then the gun shield goes on, and you marry the lower hole. Oh yeah, this, this is the first part I started by talking about making the tracks, that's the very last step. And then you go in the driver's compartment, goes on the uh, chassis. The flatbed is going on the chassis. The armored cap is going over the driver. And here goes, it comes everything together. So. And now I'm going to see this step 10. Should be a correction if they say like this. <coughs> Let me see. Ah, okay. There's this part. You can see here. You need to cut a bit out of there. You, need, you can see here, you need to cut that out, otherwise it won't fit. Probably. Probably. So I'll let this one be here. That's the instructions, pretty fast. Then there is, this was I like, a colored middle. So this is very pretty, pretty easy. Don't go good. And you're done. Uh, the colors are uh, hobby color, but yeah, well, every color you want, of course. It's dark yellow, chocolate brown, steel, tire black, and black. So I guess I'm kind of wondering whether I want the chocolate brown, to be honest. Oh, the handle for the tools, yeah, of course. And yeah, as you can see, there's one spinning scheme, and that's it. So, this is the part what we all wanted to see, to be honest. Uh, yep. Preparation is everything, and I didn't. So, I have to get a knife. Otherwise, this won't work very well. Sorry for that guys, I had to prepare and I forgot. Just at my dinner, so hope there is enough lighting for you. So. Let's start with the important things, the screws. And this is the driver's area and starts of the armored cap. It 
It says Lion Roar here in the, you can see there, uh, Lion Roar and I can't see it of course. Uh, Lion Roar and Grateful Hobby are one and the same company, so that's the uh, P I'm going to show you in a minute. Also, will be Lion Roar. Nice anti slip texture inside of the cap here. Nice small parts, no flash, what I can see so far. Some detailing inside, also some very small ejector pin marks. <coughs> I won't know how visible they will be because I think they're placed in such a way I don't know if you can see them but they're placed in such a way that they are it looks like something's going over there so I don't think you need to worry about them hmm. there was a radio on this side at least it looked like a radio Just going over everything. I don't know if you can see the texture in there. There, the, uh, there is the hood. And there's the armored car cap part. No welding details, so that's a, that's a bit of a shame. But the other detailing is pretty nice. Put it back in. I don't know when I'm gonna build it, and I don't want to damage them. The bags are nice and wide, so you can put them back easily. Uh, this is gonna be fun. These are the uh, tracks, single links. One will be enough. Uh, they are very nice. Gonna make. Some, I hope it doesn't blind you too much. I need some light because it's getting dark. Uh, like this better. This one isn't as invasive or intense. There is an eject pin mark on every one, but they are pretty small and I'm guessing the most will be covered by the wheels anyhow, so I don't think you'll need to clean them. But they are very nice. And this is one kind. And there's the other one, they're uh, one on after the other. And you can see them. Here on the back, it's only the one with the guide teeth. Between the guide teeth, I don't know if the camera picks it up, but there is a little ejector pin mark. But like I said, the uh, wheels probably go over them. So. Oh, this is a nice trick. Uh, what Great Hobby did, I'll put these back in. I thought at first uh, the P is in the box, but it isn't. It's taped to it. That's a nice detail. That's something a lot of manufacturers can learn from. Now, now I've got this one, so I'm going to check. It's very thin. It's, uh, it's lion roar, so it's high quality. It's, it's protected by another layer of plastic so that's nice it's very thin very flexible made in china so probably will be the write up that i saw first will be in chinese just a guess though if you know it's something else please correct me again another piece very thin again it's 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 Almost nothing. It's so damn thin. You have to be careful with those. And the uh, tackles. There are not a lot. Uh, Great for Hobby's own. Made in China. 
they made it the way that you can uh, do the number plate the license plate you can do it yourself There's probably not enough lighting here to see the differences but they're they're very thin and the carrier film is very it's very sharp on the edge you see you can even read it if you want but that's very nice and that's, that's definitely high quality of course we have to see how they go how they get onto the model because they can look nice but if they fall apart the second you touch them they're still worthless and I do not have any experience with great or hobby so I do have one other kit in my stash so I didn't build it yet I'm planning to build it soon oh well soon my builds tend to take a while because I don't have that much time so Next true. These are gun parts by the looks of it. Uh, this is ammo. This looks like the gun shield. Nice rubber detail. Some wheels. Guess an antenna. Hooks. Gun. One part, muzzle is not drilled out, the gun itself just a little bit I think. Now it's only the way the muzzle, nozzle goes, only this part is drilled out, it doesn't go deeper so. This part is also not drilled out, it would be nice to do it but it's going to be very fiddly work. Uh, a little bit of a rolled steel texture and also done very nicely almost no ejector pin marks only places you're not gonna be able to see and they really thought about this <sighs> give me a second guy I'm gonna try to make some more light it's getting faster dark than I expected will be enough. Normally I do this in the shed, but I move to the living room. So, uh, what do I do? The gun I wanted to show you. You can see that's very nicely done and it's drilled, as you can see, but not that far. And I think you would like to drill that out too, that would be perfect, or uh, change it for a photo edge one. But that's everyone his own course. Uh, you can see here some. Uh, is that the right one? No, that one. Sorry. Some rivet detail. Uh, you can see. So it's very clean, very nicely molded everything. Haven't seen a bit of flesh yet. And it, it's a uh, high end. Kit. It's the price is after it also, so it's, not, it's definitely not a cheap kit if you buy it in your hobby store. But I saw it in my local hobby store, it has a price tag of 75 euros. So, uh, yeah, that's not then you're gonna expect some quality for it, of course. And it's the flatbed, Again, nice anti slip texture here, wheels. Parts of the mm, chassis, railing parts, armor parts, and this is a bad thing. This is not nice because I think this part is supposed to be on there, and it's all warped already. It's damaged that part. You can see how it twisted, and this one. And I think that part's on there, and you can see on this side also. The, I hope you can pick the camera picture it up. The stress marks in the plastic there, there. The white stress mark. 
So that took a little bit of beating this. And I don't know what it's for. I just hope. No, I will be salvable. This is this is a dangerous bit. I don't know why they did it like this. No protection or whatsoever. So everything that comes on top of this sprue hits this. It's not the smartest move. Uh, Lion Roar, Great Wall, Hubby. Otherwise, looks great. Very clean. Let me show you the texture of the uh, of the bed. Back in here. You can hear it. And these are the, uh, the spots where the gun bed is going. So it's no ejector pin marks, it's supposed to be like that. I'm going to be careful with this one now. I'm going to put this on top. <coughs> Next screw. The gun bed, gun mount, whatever. Here's the, suppose the rotation device where the gun goes in. Uh, this is the firing mechanism. Here goes the cartridges with the rounds go in here and out there or the other way around. This is the turntable. As is this, this elevation device. Nice, nice in detail again. You can see very nice texturing. The part of the gun. Where did I, what did I want to show you? Oh no, I want to show you that one. The Come teeth on that one, how fine they are. You can see very, very fine molding there. Uh, no detail on the inside, you're never gonna see that anyhow. So, this is very nice detailing, very fine molding, no flash. It's cool. Uh, like I said, this is the second kit I reviewed from the Playful Hobby and it's looking very positive. Let's see what we got here. Elevating wheels, the gunners and the reloader seat, spotter seat maybe. And the armor gun parts. All small fiddly Fiddly, fiddly, fiddly things. I'm gonna show you this is everything. It's very small and fiddly, and still no flash or burring. There are, like I said, so here and there are some of the ejector pin marks, but most of them are uh, in places you're never gonna see. So I think pin uh, ejector pin marks wise. There is very little cleanup to do. All those small items on there. These are the bigger ones. Get in here. Oop, there. All small, even that fin, there is no hint of flash or warping or whatsoever. So. Very nice, very high quality molds these are. If you want to see a finished product, I know that uh, Cohen C has uh, incorporated one in his uh, King Tiger diorama. The uh, Kurt Nispel Tiger 2, he recently finished. It's the second vehicle that is this one. He did this one for the Great Wall Hobby and Appreciation build. And um, G40, I think. And seats. Detail on the, uh, the MG. It's 
very nice. The smaller thing is, the detail on it is so crisp. I hope my camera zooms in. See how it's turning around. Even on this side. And if I saw the instructions correct, you're hardly going to see this thing because it's inside the armored cap. So, what a surprise! It's so clean. Well, kudos to Great Wall, hubby. Got fire extinguishers, very nicely done. Some cleanup on those. On the in guessing on those are. Yeah, there will be some cleanup inside here, but that's again, that's a spot you can see. Tools. Nicely molded. Yeah, very nicely molded. Very sharp. I can see. There's fire extinguishers. What I said about cleanup is this is the back side. These are the allocating lock pins or whatever they're called, and there is some residual in there. So I'm guessing you need to clean those two out to get them fitting right. Or maybe not, I'm I'm not hundred percent sure. So let's go back to the wire quarters. Nice, nice, nice. Here's the spruce for the jack. Hoping it's not only the jack because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. An eight part, yeah, but uh, that will be the clamps. But yeah, it's an eight part jack, but looks of it. Not looking too bad. Very clean. You can see. Very clean molded again. Yeah, the parts. I got underneath my finger. You can see. Oh, sorry. I wanted to do this. Yeah. All goes back into here. Well, next, oh, I'm gonna take this one first. It's pretty tight. Move it out in a decent way. The chassis. Nice texturing. Rolled steel. Just a little bit of warping, could be my mat also though. Now it's warped the tiniest amount. I'm guessing when you got the wheels on it, a little bit weight, it will, it will get into shape. It's a pretty big one piece. So, rivet detail here. Nice detailing. This one can go. It's gone. There it is. I hope your camera picks it up because I don't know how the lighting is up there. The other side is exactly the same, so. Drop it, would you? Uh, That's the back, so it's very nice. Long part, one mold, so it's that's a risky business. And then even it's just 
can almost see, it is almost no seeing. You got it on the diode, there it will be natural warping, you won't even be able to see it anymore. See a gas tank, I see air brakes, see air canisters, spring suspension, transmission rod, lighting, idler transmission, steering wheel, All nicely molded again. I'm just show you the interesting parts. Oh, hey. stay there. The gas tank, pretty big. Where else? Steering wheel there. All little bits. And that's the uh, axle covers. It's going to go to form the axles underneath the uh, flatbed. The bed of the truck. And these will go inside. They will go in here. Like this. And on the outside swing arms will be attached. Um, got two more screws, but they look yeah, they're identical. So I'm gonna take only one. Road wheels. Front wheels, multi part. Swing arms, sprocket, steering wheel, idler wheel, I'm guessing. I don't know for sure. But this is the idler. I don't know what these are. Spares, probably, or something like that. Can't see it on the picture now, sir. Nice tread on the wheels. Clean molding. Easy to clean pour plugs. They're on the or gates. They're on the others underside. They're on this side, not on the sides. So you just put, take your knife and you're done. A little bit of cleanup. Nice texturing on the rims. Nicely done. I think it's a good side. This is the last screw because it's getting very dark now. And we're also half an hour in already, so. Here are the multi part wheels. Swing arms. There are the wheels. I'm guessing those two are spares. I have to check the in, uh, instructions again to know exactly what they are for. So, and these are the multi part front wheels. And there's another part coming in between, and I think the part in between. I thought I saw it seven parts. But, oh, of course, I got another one. One, two, four, six. There's something in between here. Probably a piece P or something like that. So, this was the last screw. I'm gonna put them back together in the box. 
It looks like a very, very nice remote kit. Uh, high quality plastic. Uh, lots of fiddly bits, so it's not for the beginner. But like I said, it, it's a 75 euro kit, so uh, there are not a lot of uh, armor kits that new can't compete with that uh, with that price. Uh, how do I do this now? This is the one that's damaged. Like this. So, yeah, it, it looks like it's worth it. If it will be, of course, uh, it needs to be shown. Uh, I think I'm gonna enjoy this. It's the kit itself doesn't have too much PE. Uh, the guy where I bought it from put some extra PE in it. I do not like PE, but I'm certainly will gonna use it. If I'm gonna make good of it, it's also gonna be seen. And yeah, it's gonna be a fun but complicated build. And I do like, uh, how do you say, challenges while building something. I do like simple builds for now and then, but I don't want, uh, and no offense, but I don't like Tamiya so much because they're done in about 10 minutes. They can look good, but they are just too simple for my taste. Uh, I like Dragon because they are in a, a challenge. This Great Wall Hobby one seems a definite challenge. The other Great Wall Hobby one I did also seems a definite challenge. So, uh, Great Wall Hobby is definitely producing some great, great kids. I don't know how to see that it uh, that they can do what they seem to want to do. I know that's not very good English, sorry. So, to conclude this one, I hope you like my uh, review of the 7.3 cm Flak 33 Auf Schwere Wehrmacht Schlepper or SWS. I hope you like my review. If not, please go. Uh, if you did, comment or subscribe or just like. If you liked it, but you would like some more information or better, a uh, different opinion, uh, go and see. Did a uh, review of this box also, so you may want to go over to his pay, uh, his channel and check it there. He got loads more, mostly build videos, how-to videos, so you can learn from a lot of him also. And uh, yeah, I'm starting rambling, so I'm gonna quit this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you next time. Bye bye.